A man wakes from his sleep to the growling of zombies outside. Morgan peeks out and pays no attention, it's his third day ashore, and he's been trying to contact Grace and the others via walkie-talkie every day, but to no avail. At this moment, little Morgan starts crying again, seemingly hungry. Morgan can only soothe her with Grace's headphones playing music, then he takes her to look for formula. When Morgan reaches the beach, he finds a zombie buried in the sand. He glances around and then removes the zombie's head cover, realizing this person was buried alive. Morgan arrives in a small town and struggles to find a can of formula in a car, only to discover it's empty. Finding supplies, especially scarce resources like formula, is getting increasingly difficult. Later, Morgan finds a shop where the shelves are bare except for an oxygen tank. After what feels like a long journey, Morgan stumbles upon a manor and decides to try his luck. The place is neatly arranged and eerily quiet. Morgan cautiously inspects the inside. As he approaches the stairs, he hears a woman speaking in a room. Morgan opens the door, and the woman inside becomes tense, then pulls out a knife and questions his intentions. She doesn't seem like a bad person by her demeanor. Morgan lowers his weapon, saying he's just looking for food. The woman relaxes a bit when she hears the infant in Morgan's arms cry, telling him there's no food here. Morgan then notices several pregnancy tests on the table, all indicating the woman is pregnant. Understanding the feelings of a parent, he places his weapon on the ground. He then asks how far along she is, introduces himself as Morgan, and mentions his daughter, little Morgan. The woman, looking at the child, lowers her knife and eases up, telling Morgan her name is Ava. Morgan can tell Ava is in trouble and also looking for someone. He offers mutual help, but Ava declines Morgan's offer. That night, a fruitless Morgan lies in a small boat, speaking into the walkie-talkie, hoping Grace can hear him. I don't know how much longer I can hold on without you. The child especially needs you, and I need the confidence that family provides. Any? There's somebody up there. I could really use some help down here. Suddenly, Morgan becomes alert. In this apocalypse, some humans are more dangerous than zombies. He cautiously unzips the opening. Evening. When Morgan wakes again, he finds masked people digging nearby. He looked up and saw several people with sacks over their heads standing before him. Hearing his child cry, Morgan quickly becomes alert but is pinned down by them. Morgan tries to negotiate, telling them they can take whatever they want, just return his child. But the leader retorts that she doesn't belong to him, just like the other children he's stolen. Morgan doesn't understand and insists the girl is his daughter and that he's never stolen any child. The man doesn't believe Morgan simply asking where the stolen children are. It's clear that Morgan has been taken for someone else. At the man's command, they cover Morgan's head and throw him into a hole. Morgan suddenly remembers the zombie buried in the sand from the day before, realizing it was the work of these people. He pleads with the man not to do this. Morgan isn't afraid of death but is worried about little Morgan being left uncared for. Just then, a commotion erupts outside, followed by gunshots and screams, and then the sound of a child crying. Morgan quickly removes his hood. The people outside are lying on the ground, and a figure is holding the child. Morgan cautiously says, Whoever you are, thank you for saving me. It turns out to be a woman. Morgan realizes that these people had mistaken him for the woman's accomplice, and he won't allow the woman to take the child away. She's better off with me than you, and you'll get over it. Morgan attempts to resist, but the woman immediately fires a warning shot. I was shocked when this woman showed up. This is Alicia and Nick's mother. She's alive. But Morgan has never seen Madison. Hey, stop! Madison takes the child and quickly leaves. Morgan can only stand there, watching her depart. Madison carries the child along the beach, then uses the walkie-talkie to contact the person she's meeting. They agree to complete the handover at the old place. Then Madison arrives at a pier, but when she enters, she finds the contact hasn't arrived yet. Madison contacted them again and was told that they were late because they had found a new egg. Egg means child. Madison put little Morgan in a baby box. After a while, Madison starts recording in a notebook. From the contents, it's evident that this team has collected 758 children. People like Madison, called collectors, are responsible for helping the team with such tasks. A woman's voice comes from the walkie-talkie, seemingly calling her husband, claiming the child needs him. Hearing this, Madison knows there's another prey. She contacts the organization, saying she's found a new egg. She'll leave the child in the house. They can come later and take her away. Madison prepares to find this new egg. Madison contacts the woman using the walkie-talkie, saying, 
I heard your message. I'm someone who wants to help. Where are you now? The woman replies. How do I know you're not one of those child-stealing bastards? It seems Madison's organization has a notorious reputation. Madison simply says. I'm a mother too. You can trust me. As Madison speaks, zombies surround them. She pulls out her weapon. The intense activity forces Madison to use her oxygen tank. Madison initially ignited the zombies, sacrificing herself, and was rescued by someone from the organization, but her lungs were severely damaged. Madison glanced at her oxygen tank, which was almost depleted, and knew she had to replenish it quickly, then she arrived at her oxygen storage area, only to open it and find it completely empty. At that moment, Morgan's axe was already at Madison's neck, followed by him taking her pistol. Morgan asked, where is my daughter? Madison calmly replied, somewhere you'll never find, where did you hide my oxygen? Morgan responded, also in a place you'll never find, unless you lead me to my daughter. Madison, with a threatening tone, said, the people behind me have a hundred ways to kill, but Morgan didn't care, he just wanted to find his daughter, with no other choice. Madison had to lead Morgan in the search. Along the way, Madison kept urging Morgan to give up, saying, the people behind me will kill you, and claim they weren't stealing children but saving them, asserting, you parents can't properly care for them. Every so often, Morgan would allow Madison to breathe some oxygen. Soon, Madison led Morgan to the pier, but unfortunately, they were too late, and the child had already been taken away. In desperation, Morgan searched around and then noticed a record book on the table, and beneath it, Another book with Padre written on the cover and collector no. Six inch in the name section, Morgan was shocked to see that Madison was from Padre. Madison was also surprised because ordinary people shouldn't know about this place. Morgan couldn't care less. He asked Madison to take him to the Padre headquarters. On the way, Madison continued to persuade Morgan that it was not in the child's best interest to be with him. Morgan angrily retorted, What right do you have to decide what's best for my family? Unafraid, Madison replied, I used to be a lot like you, but now I'm different. Just then, a zombie approached from behind. Morgan had to deal with the zombie first. Taking advantage of this, Madison grabbed her weapon and resisted, but Morgan quickly pounced on her. They struggled fiercely, but Madison's combat skills were no match for Morgan's, and she was quickly subdued again. However, at that moment, Morgan was distracted by the names written on Madison's wrists. One read Alicia, and he quickly checked the other, which read Nick. Suddenly, Morgan took two steps back, unable to believe what he saw. You're Madison Clark. Madison looked puzzled, wondering how Morgan could possibly know about her children. Morgan explained that her children told him she was dead and that he had seen the stadium. Madison then believed that this man must know her children and incredulously asked if they were still alive. Morgan was silent for a while before saying he would tell her everything, but she must first help him find his daughter. Madison reluctantly explained that Padre would only return children if another child was provided in exchange. Morgan flatly refused. Unable to comprehend why Padre would want to take children from other families, Madison insisted they were giving these children a better life and that it was the only way to get his daughter back. Morgan thought of the pregnant woman, Ava. He met yesterday the one calling for Madison. He reasoned that if Padre could take care of her and her unborn child, it would be a good option, and he could also get little Morgan back. Madison assured him that this would definitely get his child back and urged him to lead the way to Ava. Morgan, feeling guilty, asked if Padre would really take good care of them. Madison firmly assured him that they would. Morgan then felt much less guilty. If that's the case, it's not like he's betraying the woman, but they'll be well taken care of. Morgan took Madison to the manor where Ava was located, with the oxygen tank still in his possession, which also controlled Madison's lifeline. They talked along the way. Morgan had heard about Madison from Alicia and Nick, describing her as a caring and helpful person. Now, how could she be involved in child stealing? But Madison insisted she was saving the children. Morgan told Madison he didn't know what Padre was, but many people, including her daughter Alicia, had hoped for it and were looking for it. Madison, excited, asked why Alicia would look for Padre, but Morgan said he wouldn't reveal anything until he found his daughter. Soon, they arrived at the manor. Morgan was unsure how to start the conversation. Madison suggested they go in and explain the situation to Ava, telling her they would take her to a place where she and her child would be cared for. Morgan asked what would happen to Ava after the child was born. Madison said that wasn't their concern, though not explicitly stated. Morgan guessed Ava's fate after childbirth wouldn't be good. He began to hesitate and feel conflicted about betraying Ava. 
but he was doing it for his daughter. How can you do this to people? Get used to it. They quickly entered the house, and Ava came out. Looking puzzled at this strange woman, Morgan explained that she was there to help. Madison also told Ava that they had spoken over the radio before, and Morgan had brought her to help. Ava said softly that she was just looking for her husband and that the house belonged to her family, believing it to be very safe. Madison continued, saying they could help her and her child. The place I come from is very safe. The people there are very kind, and it's an ideal place for children to grow up. She said. Ava was somewhat skeptical. Morgan chimed in, praising the place against his will. Convinced, Ava decided to pack her bags and follow them. As Ava walked into the room, Morgan, feeling uneasy, asked Madison again what would happen to Ava after she gave birth. Madison replied that he already guessed in his heart, they would eventually be separated. As Padre operates without emotional attachments, Morgan regrets his decision because he can't do it anymore after seeing what happened to Grace after she lost her baby. Madison threatened that he would never see his daughter again, leaving Morgan speechless. As Ava finished packing, they stopped arguing. Morgan didn't reveal the truth for the sake of his daughter. As they were descending the stairs, Madison saw through the window the group with sacks on their heads, surely coming for her. Madison informed Ava that she had offended them while rescuing children. Without further thought, Ava led them towards the back door, running. Madison needed to continuously replenish her oxygen and tried to grab the backpack, but Morgan wouldn't let her. Just then, Ava tripped over a branch, and a zombie crawled towards her. In her moment of panic, Madison smashed the zombie's head with a hammer. Morgan quickly helped Ava up, discovering a wound on her stomach from the branch. They thought about fleeing, but Ava's condition and wound meant she couldn't go far. They decided to hide in a tomb chamber. They opened the large door. It was the resting place of Ava's ancestors. Madison quickly closed the door, and together with Morgan, they barricaded the entrance. Ava, holding her stomach, gasped for air. Madison then took out a stethoscope to ensure the child was okay. But after several attempts, she couldn't hear the baby's heartbeat. Morgan looked worriedly at Ava and told Madison to quickly call a Padre doctor, but Madison seemed not to hear him and continued checking for a heartbeat. A few minutes later, Madison concluded that Ava wasn't pregnant at all, which annoyed her. She questioned Ava about why she lied to them, just to be taken to Padre for better care. Morgan was also confused. Ava calmly told Madison, Did you forget? You took away my daughter. Madison paused her gaze shifting away. Ava continued, a year ago, you told me it was for my child's good, then you took her away, she was only six years old, she cried when you dragged her away from me on the beach, then Ava turned to Morgan, saying, this woman's mouth is full of lies, in fact, Ava had pretended to be pregnant, she contacted Madison over the radio to get to Padre to find her child, Madison clearly told her that your plan will not work, they will check the baby's heartbeat before boarding the ship and also after arrival. Morgan also questioned whether Ava being pregnant would actually get his daughter back. Madison, no longer hiding, said that even if Ava was pregnant, it wouldn't necessarily be successful. Ava then realized that Morgan had brought people to find her in exchange for his own child. They fell into an argument. Morgan, furious, held his axe to Madison's neck, demanding she find his daughter, or she'd never know where her children were. Madison replied that she didn't want to find them and never wanted to see them. Seeing the unyielding Madison, Morgan didn't understand how the mother Alicia described could have become like this. What was Madison's purpose in doing all this? Ava then spoke up, questioning how someone like Madison could have children. She picked up a weapon from the ground and smashed Madison's oxygen tank. Then Ava smashed a hole in a tomb chamber, pulling out a gun from inside. It was a family tradition to be buried with their favorite sidearm. She questioned how someone like Madison deserved to live. Outside, the zombies, hearing the noise, gathered around. Morgan urged Ava to stay calm, saying their priority was to stay alive and leave to find their children. Ava said she had a better plan and took out the walkie-talkie, asking if the people looking for the collector were there. Soon, there was a response. Ava claimed she was like them, a victim of Madison, and had found a way to make her comply, but she needed their help. Madison seemed to guess what Ava was planning. Then Ava threw the walkie-talkie to Morgan, telling him to inform the group where Madison's children were. She wanted to use Madison's methods against her. Morgan shook his head, saying he couldn't do it, but as Ava persisted, Morgan reluctantly revealed the truth. Because they're already dead. They're gone. I'm sorry, I really am. Suddenly, Madison lost her previous indifferent demeanor. Madison, emotionally charged, pushed Morgan against the wall and demanded, 
you said my children were still alive. And you even knew where they were. Morgan expressed helplessly, I only did it to use you to find my daughter. Madison still refused to believe, thinking that Morgan must be deceiving her. Perhaps he didn't even know the siblings Alicia and Nick. Morgan sadly said, I wouldn't lie about something like this. Your son Nick was shot. Victor, Alicia, Luciana, and I were all there. We buried him ourselves. After hearing this, Madison was devastated. Although she had thought that her children might no longer be alive, especially since the place had experienced a nuclear explosion, she still held out hope without having seen it for herself. Now Morgan's words felt like a knife in Madison's heart. The strong Madison asked again about how Alicia died. Morgan knew how cruel this was for a mother but still said reluctantly. Alicia was bitten by zombies not long ago. She had to amputate her arm, but it was too late. She got infected. Yet, she fought against the virus for months. Longer than anyone I've seen, hearing about her daughter's ordeal, Madison wished she could bear it for her. Her poor daughter had suffered so much. Morgan continued, the last time I spoke to Alicia, she was nearly gone. Madison felt choked up. Even Ava stopped speaking. It seems when grief reaches its extreme, even tears refuse to flow. I'm sorry. Half an hour later, more and more zombies gathered outside. Madison just sat there, dazed, perhaps regretting not having gone to look for them sooner. Morgan observed the outside. At least 30 zombies were gathering. This would surely attract more. Ava's walkie-talkie started ringing again, the group urging her to make the trade. Morgan said, Now that you've lost your bargaining chip, they'll likely kill us if they find us. I nearly died at their hands before. Then Morgan turned off the walkie-talkie, but with the zombies gathering, it was only a matter of time before that group found them. They needed to fight their way out quickly. Ava stated that only if all three of them fought would they stand a chance. Morgan glanced at Madison in the corner and then told her they needed her help. I'm also sorry for not telling you the truth about your children at first, but I did what I had to do for my daughter, Madison, with a melancholy expression, inquired about what her children were doing before they died. Morgan said, the first time I met Nick, he wasn't doing well, and Alicia was the same. They both thought you were dead but believed in what you were doing and strived for it. Then the accident with Nick happened. Madison pictured the scenes of her children's deaths in her mind and then asked how Alicia was bitten. Morgan continued. Some madman wanted to launch a nuclear missile. Alicia tried hard to stop it. She didn't succeed. But she survived the explosion. She helped me, my daughter, and some people we cared about escape the radiation. She struggled hard against the infection. A glimmer of hope rose in Madison's heart. Morgan hadn't seen Alicia die. But then she thought, no one bitten by zombies could survive. Yet, Morgan added, Alicia isn't just anyone, maybe she'll find a way to survive. Madison said calmly, even if she survives, I don't want to go looking for her. Morgan was puzzled at this. Madison then shared her own experience. Initially, she had sacrificed herself at the stadium and, fortunately, was saved by Padre's people. Padre made her a collector, specifically to find children, as long as she completed her tasks well. They promised to help her find Alicia and Nick. Madison worked harder than any other collector. When she had found more children than anyone else, Padre's reward for Madison was to help her find Alicia and Nick. However, Madison refused because she had seen through Padre. She didn't want her children to be forced to do things they disliked. Just like her, Morgan, confused, asked, if you don't want to find your children, why continue to work for Padre? Madison explained that Padre wasn't that simple. If I leave, they'll find my children and coerce them. But now, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I have nothing left to lose. If I knew about your children before I took yours, I wouldn't have done it. At that moment, gunfire like firecrackers sounded outside. It was clear that the group had found them and were demanding they open the door or face death. Morgan started to worry. If this group came in, they would definitely kill him and Madison. As she had saved him before and would be seen as an accomplice, Madison stood up and urged Morgan not to die for her. Morgan replied, I'm not trying to save you, I need you to help me save my daughter. Madison admitted the truth, I can't help you find her. If you want to survive now, open the door and prove we're not together. The knocking outside became more urgent. Morgan, losing his patience, told them he would open the door but needed a moment. Madison comforted him, saying there's no need for guilt. Being alive is the only way he could hope to see his child again. Morgan and Ava then moved the blockade and opened the door. The people quickly entered the house, and their leader walked in last. Removing his hood, he was a middle-aged man Wilt's son had been taken by Madison last winter, and he was here to make her pay. With the tide rising in two hours, 
Wilt ordered his men to bury Madison on the beach to slowly experience death. Half an hour later, Madison was buried on the beach, Morgan, because he cleared his relationship with Madison by opening the door, therefore was not punished. Ava asked Wilt if Madison had said anything. Wilt replied they didn't need her to, they found in her backpack a note detailing when that group was supposed to come for her. Wilt then threw a hood to Morgan, telling him to join them at the docks to ambush Padre's people. Morgan, looking at the hood, shook his head, saying this wouldn't bring back the children, it would only lead to everyone's death. Hearing this, they all surrounded him. Fortunately, Ava stepped in, persuading them to let him go. We've all lost children, why fight amongst ourselves? Wilt thought for a moment and warned Morgan, you can go, but don't interfere with us, or you know the consequences. Once they left, Morgan also advised Ava not to follow them, knowing such rash actions couldn't succeed, but Ava insisted she had to do something and followed them anyway. An hour later, Madison was struggling for air as the tide began to rise, and two zombies were washed ashore. Madison took a deep breath. She wasn't afraid of death, but being eaten alive by zombies was the most terrifying thing. Strangely, two of the three zombies had burlap on their heads. Madison thought back to the children she had taken away perhaps this was her retribution. As the zombies drew closer, Madison closed her eyes. The first zombie was suddenly tripped by the sand and fell to the ground. It crawled towards Madison again, but fortunately, Morgan arrived in time. Then, Morgan effortlessly took care of the other two zombies. Morgan hurried over and dug through the sand, telling Madison she shouldn't just die like this. Madison thought he was coming to her rescue for his daughter, but Morgan said, it's not for that. When I encountered your children, I was as confused as you. I wanted to run away from everything, and they were instrumental in my transformation. Don't lose yourself. Those who are alive can be saved. And Alicia says that's what you told her. Madison was having trouble breathing. Morgan urged her to hold on and quickly went to get an oxygen bottle. At this time, two more zombies arrived from the sea. One of whose head covering was eerily familiar it was the leader. Madison knew Padre had killed them. Before that, she had advised these people not to go to the dock. But now they had turned into zombies. Morgan hurried back with the oxygen. Morgan. Killing a few zombies was easy for him, but he was shocked when he noticed a doll at the waist of one of the zombies it was Ava's. Morgan held his weapon against the zombie's neck and removed its hood. It indeed was Ava. Three more zombies were approaching from the beach. Morgan regretted involving Ava, leading to her needless death. The zombies are already on top of Morgan. The other three zombies were getting closer and closer. Madison, anxious, reached for a weapon and managed to get one. As the zombies drew near, she broke the legs of three with one move and then smashed them one by one. Morgan kept apologizing to the zombies. Madison arrived to kill the zombies. Then she ran to breathe from the oxygen tank. Once she recovered, Madison told Morgan, I've doomed so many families. There's no saving me now, but I'll help you find your daughter. To go to Padre, there's only one way. We need to find another child for them. Morgan pondered for a while. Then seeing a radio in the backpack, he thought of a plan. Soon, they arrived at the dock where Padre's people were waiting for Madison. Seeing a stranger, the leader asked Madison who he was. Madison said he could provide something. The man looked at Morgan skeptically. Morgan spoke up. I have some information. There are people on a small boat outside, with a pregnant woman and a child. I can tell you a lot, but you have to take me with you and let me join you. The man, after hearing this, did not object and allowed them onto the boat. With that, they passed this hurdle. After traveling some distance, Morgan asked Madison where they were going and where exactly Padre was. Madison said she had been working for them for so long and knew nothing. Then, their eyes were blindfolded. And with that, Season 7 of Fear the Walking Dead officially ended. <laughs>